All right, guys, so today we are taking a look at the top 10 reef tank pests. Now, this video wouldn't be possible without MeLovesReef.com, and Mark has given us the permission to use his critter ID section of MeLovesReef.com. There's a lot of information in there, and I've used it many times to help identify the things that I've found in my reef tank. So if you are ever in question as to what you are looking at in your reef tank, jump over to MeLovesReef.com and check out the critter ID section that he has with a ton of information on MeLovesReef.com. Coming in at number 10 to kick this list off for us today is the red flatworm. Now, the red flatworm can enter your aquarium a number of different ways. One of the more common ways for this pest to enter your aquarium is by buying new coral frags from wherever and not dipping them. And the issue with this guy is it actually can reproduce by fusion, which it simply just splits itself in two, and then there's two, and then there's four, and then there's eight. I'm probably doing my math wrong there. But these guys can take over a tank extremely fast, and the issue is, is that if there was some type of die-off with these flatworms, they actually release a toxin into the tank and can cause your reef tank to crash. Now, flatworms can be prevented by using a coral dip when you're adding new additions to your tank. That's not the only way that flatworms can enter your reef tank, but it's one of the ways, one of the major ways. And they can also be reactively treated with different flatworm exits that are available. And I'll put links to both down in the description below if you want to check them out. And in my opinion, using a coral dip when you're adding new additions to your tank is the best way to prevent flatworms from entering your reef tank. Coming in at number nine on our top 10 pests that potentially could enter your reef tank is the whelk. Now, the whelk looks an awful lot like a nasnarius snail it's a snarry snail now these guys are bad news and they can eat clams and other snails as well they typically grow a little bit bigger than the good guys and the biggest difference that you're going to find with a whelk is that it actually has a very dark pigment marks on its body like the snout it looks almost tattooed as me loves reef would put it and he has a really good article on how to identify this guy and i'll be sure to put a link to that in the description below so if you think that you may have a whelk in your reef tank you can use some of the things that he talks about in that article to identify it and as far as removal i would maybe wait a couple of days to feed your tank then take some frozen food put it in the tank and watch this guy come out because if you go a couple of days without food most of the fish and invertebrates that are in the tank are going to be really screaming for it once you add it to the tank it's a really good chance that this guy would come out and then you could just pluck him out of the tank and you're good to go. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 pests that could enter your reef tank is the sundial snail. Now this guy is a zoanthid eater and how they get introduced to the reef tank is typically by a piece of live rock that has a bunch of zoanthids on it or a frag not carefully inspected. Also, they don't even need to arrive themselves. They actually can lay eggs on the live rock or lay eggs on the frag plug of the zoanthid. And essentially, they're being a good parent because they're giving their offspring the best shot at life that they can give them by attaching them to the food source in which they need to survive. Good old-fashioned coral dip is going to take care of the living snails, not so much the eggs. The eggs are going to need to be removed with a toothbrush or some type of brush to vigorously brush away those pesty sundial snail eggs. Coming in at number seven, another zoanthid eating critter, and that is the zoanthid eating nudibranch. Now, there are a ton of different nudibranchs out there, that, and they seem to have their own little niche as to what they eat. This guy, he eats zoanthids. Now, I have seen them a number of different colorations, and typically they color up the same color as whatever zoanthid they are eating. So they become incredibly hard to see on zoanthids. The best course of action for removing this guy is obviously a good defense using a coral dip on newly added zoanthids, but observation is also an important tool as well so if you are adding new corals to your reef tank all the time it's not a bad idea to quarantine plugs and see how they're going to act and you would be able to 
identify through observation if you actually have any nudibranchs that are chewy chomping on your zoanthids. Now, if you happen to be one of the unfortunate folks out there that sees their zoanthids acting a little bit weird, maybe some are closed up, some aren't, their skirt looks a little weird, keep an eye out and take a picture with your phone maybe and see if that skirt is moving around the zoanthid. It may be a zoanthid eating nudibranch. Now, these guys are very similar in their parental abilities as a sundial snail. They often lay their eggs next to the colony of zoanthids that they are chewing on. And whether that be a piece of live rock or a frag plug, that is another thing that you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on when you're adding new additions to the tank. Check the rock, check the plug for eggs, and remove them if you find them. Coming in at number six on our top 10 reef tank pests is Mahano anemones. Now, these guys act very similar to their close cousin, the Aptasia or glass anemone, and they often split very fast, but they tend to be a little greedy for space and light, and they tend to move towards the top of rock work. Now, as far as what these guys are going to do to your reef tank, if they're just alone, they're not going to bother anything, but if left unchecked, they can move through the rock work, they can sting corals and take up valuable real estate in a reef tank, which most of us know that if you've been in this hobby for any length of time, space is very important in your reef tank, especially when it comes to things that are going to sting other things. Now, for me personally, I've never had the displeasure of dealing with these guys, but I have dealt with glass anemones, and there's a number of different ways that you can deal with them, which we'll get into a little bit further in this video. But for me personally, I'd go the old-fashioned remove an anemone trick, and that's to take a five-gallon bucket, take the piece of rock which they're attached to, and hang them upside down so that they would hang and eventually detach their foot from the rock and fall into the bottom of the bucket. Me Loves Reef has a really good video on removing these anemones from rock, and his method is pretty simple. All he does is take the rock out of the tank and uses a scalpel and then scratches at the rock, removing the anemone from the rock. And I'll be sure to put a link to that video in the description below. Coming in at number five on our top 10 reef tank pest list is the Monipore Eating Nudibranch. Now these guys are a absolute pain in the butt. And as you can see here in this photo, the white spots are where the nudibranch has been eating. And every once in a while, you can kind of see a little frilly thing sticking out of the white spot. And that is in fact a Monipore eating nudibranch. Now, as far as treatment goes with these guys, because essentially the way in which you get them is just by taking Monipores, throwing them in your tank. And if there's eggs at the base of it on the plug or the rock, whatever the Monipore was attached to, essentially, or even a full-blown nudibranch on that rock, they will eat because that's part of their deal. They want to survive just like anything else in the world. But their dinner involves Monipora. And as you can see from this colony right here, this is an absolute gorgeous colony that's just getting destroyed. So as far as cure and treatment, physically remove as much of the nudibranchs as you possibly can. Check the rock work for eggs and then... Physically remove the infected monopore from the tank and dip it weekly until all signs of the nudibranch are completely gone. Now, if you can't win the battle, if you try and try and try and it just doesn't let up, the thing to do at that point is to physically remove all the monopore from the tank and starve them out. Coming in at number four in our top 10 reef tank pests is... The zoanthid eating spider. Now, this is a beefy zoanthid eating spider. He must have been eating pretty pretty good. Um, pretty creepy looking, too. But I have actually had an experience with these guys, and they are relatively easy to deal with once you know that you have them. A lot of folks that are new to the hobby, and a question actually you can find on Google is, why are my zoanthids not opening? There's a number of different reasons that that could be happening but pests are often the cause for that. Now, these guys have a very good knack of blending in, much like the zoanthid eating nudibranch, but they are relatively susceptible to dip. So if you are actively dipping your corals before adding them to your reef tank and realize if there's any problems with them going forward, taking that zoanthid out and periodically dipping it is going to do a number on these guys and help remove them from your reef tank. 
Coming in at number three on our top 10 reef tank pests is the Acropore eating flatworm. Now, these guys are pretty hard to pick up in a reef tank and often are the demise of a Acropora colony in a reef tank. And they are so hard to see that actually Milo's Reef has a little trick that he shares on his website, and that is essentially taking the colony out of the reef tank, putting it in a white bucket, adding some dip solution, swirling it around, mixing it up a little good. Actually, you want to add the dip solution before you add the coral. You don't want to add concentrated dip. Yeah, I forget. Don't, don't do that. Uh, you want to mix it up, then put the coral in the bucket. But take a turkey baster and blow around on the colony and see if there's anything that's coming off. And on a white bucket, they're going to show up relatively well. Much like other pests that are on this list, they tend to blend in very well with their food source and often color up to the type of coral that they are eating. A good dip solution is always a strong way to go about dealing with acropora eating flatworms and many other pests. Uh, but a wrasse are known to pick at the rock work and often uh, pick little guys off like this and remove them from your corals. So they not only are they a beautiful fish, they are a great uh, form of pest control in a reef tank. Coming in at number two on our top 10 reef tank pests is the dreaded red bug. Now, the red bug is feared amongst SBS keepers everywhere. Now, they are incredibly hard to remove from a reef tank, and their appearance is often of a tiny flea and are often yellow in coloration. Not only red, but yellow as well. And as far as treatment goes for these guys, there is a product called Interceptor, which is only available at local vets. And it takes many, many treatments with that product to remove these guys from your reef tank. I have never had the experience of dealing with these guys, but from what I hear, they can be relatively devastating and often are the demise of a SPS-dominated reef tank. Coming in at number one on our top 10 reef tank pests is the dreaded glass anemone and or aptasia. Now these guys relatively seem harmless in maybe one or two in a reef tank, but can pose a huge problem when they get out of hand and they can definitely take over a reef tank, often overgrowing corals and stinging corals and killing them they are a pain in the butt. Now, I have a pretty good story that I'd like to share with you guys about a glass anemone, and I only had one in the tank, but it was absolute beast mode. It was probably this, it was probably bigger than a silver dollar. And I just left it alone, didn't really bother anything. It was just doing its thing. It hadn't split a bunch of times or anything like that. Went to the local fish store, got a shrimp, and I think I got some other um, invertebrates on that. It was like a critter stalking that was happening that day and acclimated them three hours drip acclimation and then added them to the tank and the shrimp freaked out when I added it to the tank and it was swimming backwards made a couple laps around the tank and then just landed back end into that monstrous glass anemone and died instantly it was like a $24 shrimp that lasted in the tank for about a minute so don't be like me. Don't just allow it to get bigger and bigger or split and just overrun your tank. If you have them, take care of them. There's a number of different treatments out there, and I'll be sure to include some in the description below if you, in fact, have glass anemones in your reef tank. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Thanks for playing, and I'll see you next week right here with a brand new video. Stay salty.